what is going on everybody so yesterday during my video the audio for the last part gave out and a few of my clips towards the end of the day so i'm out here i changed a few settings i'm going to try something different we're going to see how it looks hopefully it's good ah! there's a cop right there what do i do Hey, sir, there's nothing behind you. There's nothing behind you, sir. You can stop running. You're okay. I'll forever do that to people running. But like I previously stated, it's just because I'm too fat and lazy to run. So in my last video, I rode for about four and a half hours. And I kind of wanted to give you guys my input on the comfort level of the Indian Scout Bobber. And what I think about it, but I also want to let you guys know that I do have the 10 inch mini apes as you clearly see And I also have the comfort seat which you can't see because I'm sitting on it I'm gonna eventually pass these guys. I just don't want to do it around the blind corner There we go comfort of the Indian Scout Bomber. Yesterday, I am not gonna lie, I was extremely sore after just four and a half hours. I would say around the four hour mark, I was hurting. I was ready to get off this bike. I didn't want to ride anymore. I was starting to get very uncomfortable. My hands go real numb, which really is disappointing because I did get the raised up bars. I really thought that was gonna help me. I'm constantly dropping them down to the side, trying to get the feeling back in and let the blood flow. Then I gotta take my hand off the throttle, I gotta shake it out, and then we're dropping speed, and I don't like that. I don't wanna keep doing that over and over. I just wanna keep riding. I shouldn't have to constantly take my hand off. Or sometimes I'll just rest my, my left arm here on my lap. That way I don't have to worry about it going numb. But I can't really do that with my throttle hand, so. This one goes numb the most. I'm also not riding all the time. That was a long ride for me. You know, I'm used to doing an hour to two hours at a time. I'm not really used to doing big four and a half hour trips like that. So for me, that's quite a bit, especially on this bike. I know that this bike is not built for comfort. It's built for looks, if we're being honest. So I'm not expecting this bike to perform like a Chieftain would or anything like that nature. I get what it was meant for, and it's made for in-town cruising. Just ride around for a few hours, enjoy yourself. So you kind of get what you get when it comes to buying this bike. The second most uncomfortable part of this motorcycle is gonna have to be the seat. I know I got the Indian Scout Bobber comfort seat, and it is way better than the stock one. The stock one, I would feel sore after about an hour. Yesterday, I got about four hours until I really started getting sore. I don't mind the riding position of this bike. I sit pretty good on it. My legs aren't cramped. That's not really the issue. I know that the issue really has to go with the seat. Maybe one day I'll upgrade to the Corbin seat or something, but I'm not too sure yet. Like I said, this isn't horrible. I made it about a whole four hours, so that's really not that bad considering there's not gonna be many times where I'm riding this thing for longer than a four hour stretch, so. That, those are issues that all don't bother me. Like I said, quick fixes. Your arms go numb, just throw them down for a second. If your butt starts to go numb, just hop off the bike for a few minutes, walk around, stretch your legs, and then you're good for a while again. Hey, should I beg like all those whiny guys that moto vlog? Ah, oh, why'd you cut me off? Oh my god! And then they shake their head like that. I can't stand that, guys. Like, I get it if you get aggravated if somebody cuts you off, but when they're that far in front of you, relax. Be the better driver. Figure it out. You're okay. Always have an escape plan. Don't just sit here and whine and shake your head for the camera. Like, come on. You're better than that. I know you are. Ooh, it's toasty. Hey, I have shoes on today. Don't judge me. I don't have gloves. Short sleeve shirt. Running shoes. Which is funny because I don't run. But 
I know I could do better as a rider with wearing protective gear, but at the same token, it is my choice. At least I do wear the helmet. Hey, big old mural. It's a nice one. All right, guys, so that's gonna bring me to my next point about the whole comfort situation with the Indian Scout Bobber. And I'm gonna talk about the shocks. The shocks for this bike are god awful. I really noticed it yesterday. Like yesterday was really bugging me. Every single bump I hit, my back felt like it was gonna snap in half. Honestly, that was probably one of the most uncomfortable things about the ride yesterday was every single bump I hit. Just like normal roads, just like this, but every like 100 feet, there would be a huge bump that I would hit. And it would kill my back. I still have the stock shocks on this bike and I've never tampered with them. I know they gave me the tool that I could tighten or loosen. I've always kind of been hesitant to do anything about that because I'm not sure. I don't want to ruin anything. I have to look more into it. I do it. Ooh, see, like right there, I just hit a bump and my back just like an accordion just pushed together like that. It, it hurts so bad. Like right now it's okay, but after doing that a hundred times, you really start to feel and it really starts to get sore. I really, really want to look into just upgrading the shocks in general and getting better shocks. I know a lot of people on YouTube with the Indian Scout Bobber, it's one of the main things they do is get new shocks put on the bike. So honestly, I think next year, I'm just gonna throw some new shocks on it. We'll see how that improves the comfortability of the bike. I'm hoping it does. I do want to start riding for longer periods and I am not getting rid of this bike. I don't care. I don't care what you guys say. I'm not getting rid of it. I will get a new bike eventually. Oop, there's another bump. There you go and your back just goes <laughs> Not a big fan. So I'm curious for any of you guys with the Indian Scout Bobber, have you upgraded your shocks? Or have you even tweaked the stock shocks that are on the bike? If you have, please leave a comment down below. If you have, please leave a comment down below. I'm super curious to see if there's something that can be done right now without spending too much money on putting brand new shocks on. So let me know if you tweaked them, if you tightened them, loosened them, what worked for you. Leave it down in the comments. I would love to hear about them. Even if you don't have the Indian Scout Bobber and you have a different bike, just leave it down in the comments below if you ever tweaked for your shocks and what to do when you do tweak your shocks. All right, guys, so let's do a little third shift pull, and that'll bring me into the last topic I want to talk about, and that is going to be the wind. Ah, oh, so much fun. Got to get those RPMs up every so often. Make the bike feel alive. <laughs> Look at that house. It's like a little, it's like a dome. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I want to talk about the wind that you get from the bike. There's really no issues. I can't complain about the wind. When I'm doing 45 like this right now, it's fine. I don't feel like any strain. I'm not holding myself. I'm not white knuckling it, holding on to the grips. Everything's fine. But when you get over 60 miles an hour, that's when it becomes an issue. If you're riding for like an hour or so more at 60 miles an hour plus, yeah, it starts to get very uncomfortable. You start to really feel some strain in your shoulders from holding on, bracing yourself, a lot of strain in your neck from holding yourself up. I have a pretty decent helmet too that, you know, it really does deflect a lot of the wind, so it helps out, but you really can feel it when you're when you're riding for a long time like that, you really can start to feel the strain in your neck. You know, your, your neck muscles start to get real sore. So I know that they do make the fairings now for this. I don't want it. To me, I don't enjoy the look of that. Uh, they also make the windshields. I'm sorry, yet again, I don't enjoy the look of that. It's cool if you have them. Everybody has their own preferences, but for me, I just like the clean look of not having anything there. But if you do have the fairing on the Scout Bobber or even a windshield, let me know how it is. I mean, maybe I'll change my mind one day, but for now, I just don't really like the looks and I would hate to spend that kind of money on something and not enjoy it. So if you do have it, let me know if it's worth it. Maybe you'll talk me into it. 
And I know this video is going to seem like a lot of complaints and me complaining. I'm not putting the bike down in any way, shape, or form. I'm just letting you guys know about the comfort level of the bike. This video is going to be just to help people out that are looking at buying the Indian Scout Bobber and they want to know what the comfortability level of the bike is. And I'm saying right now, none of these things make me not want to have this bike. You know, it's not like I want to turn around and get rid of it because of these things. It's nothing serious. I'm not in agonizing pain. I was a little sore yesterday, but I rode for four and a half hours. I had the time of my life. I was happy doing it. I wasn't upset when I got home from that ride yesterday. Everything was okay. It took a little bit. <laughs> my body got adjusted and I felt fine. I was a little sore this morning and same thing. The more I woke up, I was fine. Like right now, I don't feel any pain. But I'm sure if I was to ride for another three to four hours, I'm going to start feeling pain. So if you're looking at getting this bike and you want to take it cross country, I wouldn't suggest that. But if you live in a nice town, a nice area, and you want to get back and forth to certain places around you, maybe run some errands on your bike, just do some back road cruising like this, I highly recommend it. This is the perfect bike for it. This is the perfect bike to just go on the back road and cruise around around 45 miles an hour. And when you want to pick up some speed, the bike will do that. It's just not going to be ideal for long periods of time. It's like, I don't ride this bike on the highway. I'll be 100% honest, I have never taken this bike on the highway. And I've owned it since 2018. I just don't see the need in it. There's no need for me to get on the highway when I can take a back road to get there and have a better time. I didn't get this bike for going on long travels or going to far away destinations from my house. I got it to ride around back roads and cruise around, discover areas around me. Little cover bridge. Yeah, it's definitely that time, guys. Of course it is. Ah, sweet, sweet music in my ears. Hopefully you found this video somewhat insightful. Like I said, they're not major flaws. They're all fixable. Everybody has their own likings, and you can tune it pretty much however you want. So I'm sure over time I'll get this bike to be a lot more comfortable. But if you guys have made it this far in the video, hopefully you can hit the like button, the subscribe button, join along for the many adventures we have planned this summer. We're definitely going to have a lot of fun on this channel, a lot of adventures. You're not going to want to miss them. But I'm going to wrap the video up here, guys. Until next adventure, peace out.